Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today for some writing time. Whew, here we are. Give yourself some credit. We've made it through the week, just about. Shouldn't jump the gun, but we're getting there. And I want you to take a minute and just take stock. If this is the first video you're joining us for, or if you've been doing every one, take a minute and just celebrate yourself for, for a change, perhaps. I've often thought in raising kids how strange it is that we celebrate when they go to the bathroom and when they learn to wash their hands. And I mean, not just the first time, but many, many times and how exciting that is. But as adults, we so seldom celebrate that for ourselves. So if you've put yourself outside of your comfort zone a bit, taken some time for your own creativity, give yourself a pat on the back. It's been a really, really stressful time. And the fact that we've been, even been able to do this together is pretty amazing. So let's take a moment and appreciate that. Today we're going to be doing some writing um, for stage or for theater, or if you don't want it to go anywhere, then that's fine too. Um, but using the stage as our inspiration, we're going to do an activity that I'm calling a walk down memory lane. And I find that sometimes writing speech or dialogue, which is two people talking, or monologue, which is one person um, speaking, can be tricky, um, at least when you're first approaching it, but it's also a lot of fun. I absolutely love it. And I find this is one of those occasions where I can take advantage of the voices that are often in my head, right? So I think all of us hear voices in our head of some kind or another. I know on our very first day together, we did a little exploration of what I was calling our writing monster. Um, and that is one of the many, many voices that might be in our heads. Um, it's interesting too because a lot of the voices um, that can be in our heads can often be the voices of other people. So um, could be the voices that we rehearse over and over that we've heard from our parents or teachers, relatives, friends, um, you know, people we've been in relationship with in some way or another. And <clears throat> it's really interesting sometimes to wade through that. Sometimes we want to push that aside and actually get in touch with our own voice. Um, and sometimes in writing, we can actually look at those other voices that might be happening in our, our head as well. That can give us inspiration, at least for me. Um, it's a place I, I like to visit sometimes. Um, the thing about dialogue or monologue is that you want it to be realistic, but if it's too realistic, it runs the risk of being pretty boring, right? If you think about some of our conversations anyway, a lot of them involve a lot of mm, ums, mm, let me think about it, get back to you. Um, it's not always you know, witty repartee um, that you might see in a stage play, for instance. So um, if you're not used to writing speech or dialogue, you can try it writing in your own voice. So you can imagine, for instance, that you're writing in your journal or literally talking to a friend um, or an enemy or an old boyfriend, girlfriend, stranger at the grocery store, anybody really, right? Though that can be important because how you speak in addition to what you say might change depending on who it is you're talking to. So today we're going to write a short monologue based around a memory. So here are the steps. I'll set them out for you. And then we'll put aside a little writing time where we can sit down and write together. So first step, imagine your character. Um, is it you, someone like you, or maybe a fictional character that you're working on in another story or just that's come to you over the course of the week? Hopefully you've been keeping some notes in your writing journal. Um, so what is their name? And just, you know, maybe a brief sentence about them. So step one. Step two is to think of a very distinctive characteristic about this person or character. So it could be an opinion that they have, a habit, something that they strongly like or dislike, um, or partic a particular feeling that they return to. So the more particular and distinctive this characteristic, the better. So for instance, you could have a character who likes puttering in their garden, and that's fine, right? That's a pretty common, you know, common feature. A lot of people like, you know, doing that. Um, that could be a habit or a behavior that they do regularly. Um, but even better is if you go a little further. For instance, they love gardening and particularly adore the smell of lilacs at night, right? So this is better. This is more specific, more sensory, uh, more particular, right? So you can start asking your questions, well, what is it about lilacs in particular? What is it about the night, right, that makes them smell different or better? Or So this we can start getting into um, more information and more background in our character. Right. It can lead to a richer exploration. So that's step two. Step three is going to be then asking ourselves, where did this particular characteristic come from? 
So you might ask yourself questions like, why do they feel this way? Or do this thing or have this strong opinion? Where did it come from, right? How did it come about? Um, finally, step four, <clears throat> we're going to write a monologue from this character's voice. So it is as if they are speaking, right? Um, about a memory associated with how and why they came to develop this particular characteristic. So once again, um, there's going to be some potentially some storytelling involved, right? Now, um, if you're feeling like exploring this a little further, I'm going to give you a couple bonus steps. That might be enough to just explore how it is that this came to be, this particular habit, opinion, etc. If you feel like exploring a little more, I'll give you two bonus steps, number five and six. So number five, you could play around with the idea of the stage. So if you actually do want to envision this as a, on stage, um, you could think about some of the physical aspects, like do does your character tell this story to the audience or um, do other actors and and maybe they themselves get involved in acting out this memory right playing it out before our eyes um, also number six uh, does this character just tell the story or do they also react comment um, have some feedback and interaction about how it's now affecting them in their lives today right so those are some directions you can go in if you get stuck in your initial phases of brainstorming, which can sometimes happen, right? It's that blank page syndrome again. Wow, where do I start? Um, go back to just the basic question. Who's your character, right? What's their particular characteristic? You might want to go back to your list from earlier in the week. Remember when we were doing some brainstorming of lists? It might give you some ideas, right? Um, about a particular person um, that you might want to shape your character on or some of those behaviors. Another thing you might want to do um, if you're in search of a little inspiration is pause this video and you could watch the first six minutes of um, the classic Canadian play Billy Bishop Goes to War by um, Eric Peterson and John Gray. It's a fantastic classic um, where <clears throat> the character of Billy Bishop is recounting his memory um, in those first six minutes. It's a good example of what it first felt like when he idealized going off to war, um, what it would be like to go and fight. Um, and he starts actually with a specific opinion about war, right? Which is when a country hasn't been in a war for a long time, it becomes desperate and excited and actually keen for this. Um, and as he's um, then going further into where that opinion came from, he's telling a story, his early experience about how he got himself swept up in recruitment fever. Um, he was a terrible student at the Royal Military College and caught cheating on an exam kicked out and then you know joins up in the army becomes a cavalry officer and he's actually acting some of this memory out while he's telling it um, to the audience so you could take a look at the first six minutes or so of that um, classic stage play for some inspiration it's on um, a cbc website curio.ca so um I'll give you your writing time now and I'll put those instructions once again up on the screen while you're writing to uh, help guide you if you forget and go to it, enjoy.
All right, time's up on that one. Um, good job. If you've gotten swept up in, uh, in a story there, feel free, of course, take some more time and, and go further with that one. Um, and if you're done, you're done. So um, I wanted to just give you a heads up. Um, look out for an email in your inbox tomorrow. And if you are at all interested in sharing some writing, I would absolutely love to see it. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, ways of sharing our writing with the world um, besides the traditional publishing route, right? That's the first thing we generally think of, oh, I want to be a writer and I want to publish a book. But there's so many other ways we can share writing in the world um, that, that celebrate the joy of creativity without having a very specific narrow parameter of the published book. So we're going to have some fun with that on Saturday. I would love to see some writing um, in a very low pressure, just sharing kind of situation. So if you feel comfortable doing that, please go ahead, look over your, uh, your some of your writing from the week. And if you want to type up one or two of your favorite things or send it all over, that would be fabulous. So you can either scan it um, or type it up and send it along to me at my email address, katrinraymond at hotmail.com. Please give me a little indication um, in your email whether you're willing for it to be shared um, with the group or if it's just for my eyes. Um, one way or another, I welcome um, any questions or comments as well. And I look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Take care.